Welcome to Mercy's Designs. My name is Mercy and I demonstrate stamping up products. Today I'm going to show a pinwheel card. Now I have shown this before in one of my tutorials last fall, but it is well worth doing multiple times. It's so much fun because it's kind of a never ending card. So you keep turning it and you get, you have a new scene. Now it can, because it's, it's called a pinwheel card, because it looks like a pinwheel, because you're turning it constantly, it's actually surprisingly easy to get mixed up when you're assembling it, etc. So I've gone ahead and numbered mine here with some post-it notes. So I will stay on track when I'm demonstrating how to assemble this card. So I think it's just so much fun and you can just keep playing with it. It's a, kind of like a fidget card, <laughs> I would say. So um, I have written down some of my dimensions and so on and I will try to list these in the description below and the stamp sets I used are Grassy Grove here this is a nature set on the horizon which is also kind of in nature and last but not least Happy Hedgehogs so I will get started by showing how to do this fold and the first thing you will need is your trimmer and a piece of DSP. So the piece of DSP I have here is a one a four and one fourth by four and one fourth. And it's just very simple scoring. So I my scoring will be one inch, two inches, three inches, and four inches. So you can just line it up. And your lighter color um, thing here with the st the trimmer is the scoring. So I just move it down and move, keep moving it down the line. And finally here. So what I have is this piece right here. So what I'm going to do next is burnish the score lines. So I just bring in my bone folder and the side that will show the most is the inside. And this is just a, some pattern paper I have that's not stamping up because, you know, quite frankly, you're not gonna really see this that much. So I don't like to waste my paper. <laughs> Forget the fact that I have lots and lots of DSP stashed away but you know anyhow so what you're gonna see here is you want it to line up now I must have trimmed this a little bit wrong <laughs> and what that's okay just fix it so I have my little trimmer here and I see that I have it a little bit off so I will just come in here and trim it up a little okay so next I'm going to create a box a tower here and the easiest way to do it this is to do it flat so you need to get a little bit of glue and don't use a ton of glue here because you don't want it to seep so just a nice little line of glue and then you fold this over and now it's all set so once it's over it will you can pop it back and you have this little tower I like to call it and then the the following thing you will need are your strips of paper which I need to grab real quick and I'll be right back okay so what you need are these pieces of cardstock measuring two and three-fourths by four and a fourth and you can do this by these four pieces will come out of one piece of 11 by four and a quarter. So if you, I chop these up, that's what you would, you end up with the, are these pieces. And now you, we're going to add these to the tower. So the first, I suggest gluing directly onto your tower. And the most important thing to remember when you're doing your tower, here I'm gonna make sure this is, comes out every direction. You can correct it if it's a little off because I want it to be able to fold flat in every direction. Okay, so 
when you're doing this, make sure that you um, do not go over this. So I will show you in a second what I mean. You want to um, obviously come close to the edge, but when you're doing it, you want to make sure that you have just a hair so that it can, oh, see, not quite that much. You want just a hair so when it turns, it's not going to be impeded. You just want a hair. So there's our first one. Next, we're gonna add it in here. So this is how you are building your pinwheel. Don't worry about the back side. We, it creates its own, it, which can be kind of confusing, but it's really not. So just keep going with your pinwheels. You can see just a hair here I could use. So that's the beauty of liquid glue. You do have that little bit of second to add it. Okay, so now we're gonna add on here. And you do wanna make sure you get to the edges, but not so it's seeping. You don't want any seepage because you don't wanna impede anything for it to not freely move. Okay, so you can see I'm just adding, leaving a little bit there, here. And finally, now this piece is the last one. And then our pinwheel will be complete. So you can see that it goes pretty quickly. This is actually a very simple card, a fun fold. It's not terribly difficult, but it's really fun because, again, I think the best part is it's kind of never ending. You keep turning it. So here is the base now. Now you can obviously add DSP to each of these and that is really cool looking. But with this one, I wanted to do some ink blending so now we are going to make our DSP, which is this one. Four, I mean two and a half by four inches, one and a half by four inches. Now, because I need a number of these, as you can see, I have devised this where I take a four by eight and do the ink blending, and then I will um, cut it up from there. And th this works for several reasons. First, it's time saving. And second, you will then have, uh, it'll go faster. It'll, you'll have it more even. I mean, the, you'll see, you'll have it more um, uniform. That's the word I'm looking for. So I am going to get my mint macaron for my grass. And then for my um, upper part will be pale papaya. And finally, I will add some highlights of Calypso Coral. So this part I will speed up just for the sake of time and you will see the end result shortly. Okay, so now we have our four pieces that are going to be used and we will do another cut, but first we are going to stamp it. And to do the stamping, I have my Stamparatus set up. So two of them I'm gonna do the image that is from the grassy grove and two from the, um, on the horizon. So as you can see, I have this set up I'm trying to see which way I have it set up. Okay, my Stamparatus, I'm gonna back out a little bit here. And I am going to just fit it in here. So I am gonna put the grass here, and now this stamp is too large, but it comes out pretty well 
considering. So I bring in, I'm gonna bring in my Evening Evergreen and ink this up. And it will come out every time the same place because I'm using the Stamparatus. And that's useful to have that consistency. I'm just making sure I have this inked up. It's a fairly solid image, so I wanna make sure I'm not missing any parts. But of course you can re-ink. However, with this setup, it isn't as exact as when I do a die cut something out. I have my own little L. Okay, so here is the result. Now I am going to keep adding. So this one, I'm going to be using it, I'm going to step it down because this image is actually too short. So this is a fun technique. So this one is fine the way it is. So I'm going to just go down two hinges. So oh, my ink pad was in the way. And I'm going to swing the door and boom, we now have it stamped twice. It does go over, but that's not a big deal. So that's the image. And quickly I will do the next one and then we will cut it apart. So it goes very quickly too when you're doing the stamp rest than guessing. So this one, and it doesn't matter which order you do it, obviously. Both need to be done. Okay, so I'm just going to move this down and boom, ta-da, it's all done now. There we go. So the next part will be to um, keep assembling the card and then we'll add the decorations or, you know, the other pieces that go in it. So I will um, speed up parts of this, but the thing here is now I'm going to um, cut this down. Yeah. I'm going to cut it down to one and a half inches on every left side. So just like that. And um, if you want to make sure you keep your pieces together, I would suggest you go ahead and number these. So um, on the back, write it down. But I will probably do that after I do a little bit of stamping. So just sit back and I will do this next part in, you know, by, by speeding it up.
Okay, so I thought I would um, just go ahead and add all the die cuts. And maybe you noticed or not, I don't know. I wrote on the back of each one the number is associated. So on this panel, everything I put one and this one two, etc. So now what's remaining is to attach it, bring in our thing. So you don't have to um, worry too much about you know where to start and you can mix this up so but for the sake of the video and how I've done this I will stay with my order that I had in my original card it'll just be a little less confusing so I will um, go ahead add these I'll speed this up as well So this final piece right here is where you can write your note to someone. And if you don't want to add anything, you don't have to, but that's sort of the point of a card, right? You got to at least sign it. So this is the one I've designated for that. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, the pinwheel card, and we'll give this a try. I think it's just really cool how you can go through and you can see I sponged this one a little darker than my original. Some of these are lighter. You can go lighter, you can go darker, but it really helps, um, I think, to see all this information as far as like numbering the panels. And I obviously have that for, um, I, I put it on the back when I do things ahead, numbers, so you can tell the difference. So this is one, two, three, four, etc. I um, really have enjoyed this card, and if you have any questions, please email me at mewants3 at gmail.com, and I'd be happy to answer any questions, or if you would like to place an order with me, you can. Um, if you want to leave a comment below, that's very much appreciated, and I um, thank you so much for watching. So here I'll just bring this back in so you know some of the items, what I did with it in here. So happy stamping.